So I remember this day like it was yesterday. I will never forget this day. I actually have a drawing of it. I should go over there and show you my drawing of this situation that happened to me. So it was 2004-ish, 2003. I just said I'd never forget the day, but I don't know. I don't know what year it was. I don't. I just remember this happening, and I was in a meditation in a closet in my bedroom, and I all of a sudden had appeared to me. This version of Jesus that you read about in Revelations. And he, he the being said to me, there was tele, te, telepathic waves. There was no actual speaking happened. But he said to me, just know that you're on this planet, but you're not of this planet. And I internalized that. And it has kind of, I don't want to say ruined, but kind of ruined my life. Now, this happened when I was in my early 20s. I was somewhat ambitious at the time, and not that I'm not ambitious now, and not that I don't do things, and not that I don't work, and not that I don't do blah, 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 blah. But it got me to thinking, like, of just none of it matters. You know, you're going to be here, you're going to be here for a certain amount of time, none, none of it really matters, you're just a blob with bones, and you're just on this planet, and here we are. And there's really no reason to care about anything. And then it got me, I got to thinking, somebody asked me a question the other day that, uh, you know, do you take a prestigious job, or do you actually go your own path, and... <clears throat> Uh, you know, lay down roots or do you just go and, and hike and eat fruit all day? What do you, what do you do in life? You know what, you know, I, and I'm, I'm thinking I've been on this planet now for some time for four decades. It seems crazy. <clears throat> and, um, I remember when my mom turned 40 and it, it, I felt like she was so old and not, not that I'm 40, I really don't even feel that old. And it, it's, it's just crazy to me, but I got to thinking of all of this stuff and I got to thinking, why have I done so much of what I've done? I like some of the beliefs that I had back in the day were just so stupid. And I see it a lot in the vegan community, especially the vegan community. Like, well, there's too many people on the planet and, you know, we, we, you know, you know, have as much sex as you want to, but either kill the kid or, or, or wrap up or, you know, have your nuts cut or whatever, tubes tied, whatever. You know, you got a lot of that going on and you got a lot of the, you know, it's just nonsense. I got into this whole world because uh, the vegan world, because I was dying. I was killing myself with a keto carnivore drinking after I got done with it because I was so depressed because I smelled terrible. I looked terrible. My hair was falling out. I couldn't sleep. And uh, it was just nuts. So, so I combine all of this, you know, you combine all this just floating through life, man. Just don't give a whatever about anything, right? Because you had this meditation and you're like, Jesus spoke to me. He's like, well, you know, and it doesn't really matter anyways. But instead of taking it that way, I could have taken it another way, which is kind of what I'm doing now, you know, 43 years on onto this flat disc or spinning rock, whatever you want to call it. And I, I got to thinking the question, the, the answer to that question that, that this person asked me, would you take the prestigious job, do whatever it is with your, you know, your life that, that you know, that you, your, your quote purpose on this planet, or would you just, you know, go hike, sit and meditate everywhere and do whatever else and eat fruit? What would I do? So if the prestigious job is something that you actually like, it's not just to get this job to... I don't know, make other people happy, which is what I've done most, most of my life. I've had a lot of jobs, but all of them, most of them, 98% of them were just so the people in my life were not complaining that I didn't really feel like going to this job, even though, so I wouldn't, I would just internalize this. I wouldn't talk about it really hardly at all that I was had headaches and my foot was falling apart and all that kind of other stuff. I would just go to these jobs and have, you know, the insurance and all that worldly stuff that you need, even though Jesus had told me that you really don't need it. And, you know, none of this matters. Right. So what my answer to this question would be was the prestigious job. If it's something that you want and it's something that you train for and you really want that, then go do it. But if it's to Please, everybody else in your life, you know, for whatever reason, for whatever reason that might be. Don't do it. Don't do it. My ideal life, now that I look at it, would be to find somebody who I was on the same wavelength as. Because, you know, another thing that I believed is, you know, find your opposite, the total polar opposite of you and you guys opposites attract. 
I don't know if, if I buy into that anymore. I really don't think I buy into that because I am, um, if I showed you this room, you'd be like, oh, you know, there's stuff, there's magazines all over down here because I found a huge slew of magazines from my, my past and I'm selling off and I got stuff over here. I got stuff over here. Kind of a mess, right? And I've always kind of gravitated towards type A and it just doesn't work that well. It just, I, like, I go crazy. I can't, not that I want my house to look like a bomb went off, because actually when it was just me here living by myself, I think most people would have come in here and ask if anybody even lived here because I didn't run the lights. I didn't have anything anywhere. But I, I, I actually, in this point in my life, I really don't think that you're supposed to find somebody who's the polar opposite of you because it just doesn't make sense. I know you can use the magnets, uh, for example, like to a positive and a positive are going to repel each other, but find somebody that's kind of on the same length as you because otherwise you're not going to understand each other. It's just not going to happen. And, you know, the communication might be there and there's other things that might be there, but overall, I just don't think it's a good idea. So find somebody that understands just your level of weird. And somebody asked me a long time ago in the lives, back when I, I used to do lives, like, if you were rich, what would happen? I would achieve the level of weird that nobody even knew was possible. If I, when, when I had all that, and when I have all that money in the bank and I can just have my house down in, in the tropical area and I got my, my garden, I will achieve a level of weird that most people did not, not like hurting other people, but just a level of weird that I could achieve would be just almost legendary, right? So I got that going, but find somebody that is on that wavelength with you. You know, things might not always go great. You might have fire and ice. You might have that. But when it is really going, it is really going. Because I don't know. And, and then build off of that. And another thing, that the whole not having a kid thing. I was terrified to have a kid because I had this idea. I don't even know where it came from that like, well, there's too many people on the planet now. You know, like how stupid of an idea is this? Like it's our decision. So... You know, I'm floating through life most of my life. I'm just not even aware of what's going on. Bouncing from one new age spiritual thing to another, which completely keeps you miserable. Like, uh, you know, put a crystal over here and your hemorrhoids will heal. Or, you know, write this on the wall over here and, you know, you're going to be healed, man. Every time you look at that, that thing is going to heal you or, or whatever it is, you know, whatever it is. You know, Jesus warned about this stuff in the Bible, even back in his day, like, you know, don't, don't go with the, you know, the others, you know, who are, you know, preaching all this kind of stuff. Now, I'm not saying that, like, the moon cycles and everything don't affect us. I mean, if we're on this planet, we're made of the material from this planet. Chances are real good because we're made of this material. It's going to affect us somehow, some way, you know, there, there's something that's going to affect us, right? But having a consistency and just oh, like tugged over here and tugged over here, everybody's got a new idea for you, and you're like, oh, please these people, you know, over here, please these people over here, and see how it goes. And it doesn't. It doesn't. Answer to the question is, what is it that you, that you want to do now? At the hiking and eating fruit all day, I don't know. I don't know. Probably not my thing. You know, maybe. I mean, I've told people that in the past. I just want to like. I was talking to, you know, my sister the other day and, I'm, and she's like, oh, I'm just ready to go off into the woods and not be seen by anybody anymore. And I'm like, eh, you know, I agreed. But then I started thinking about it. Like, how boring is that? Right. I'm by myself all day long. I don't really know if I want to do that anymore. I mean, we don't always, you know, we don't always even get along. Right. We are. We are, you know, there's you and I, you know, the the, 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 the we or whatever, like they said in the Big Lebowski. But. You don't even always get along with yourself. So it is nice to have ways of bouncing things off of other people. And I think it's really especially good of all things that you can do is to build relationships. Now, I think the base relationship should be with you and a significant other. You're going to create a life together. And I think the best thing that you guys can do, the two of you, is to not talk about your relationship with anybody else. They might know that you're in a relationship. They don't have to know anything beyond that. Nothing beyond that. 
I think one of the worst things that you can do is start talking about your relationship and asking questions and blah, blah, blah about everything else because everybody's going to have a different opinion and somebody might be better about this and somebody might be better and then you start listening to this stuff and you can tell I've been really thinking about this lately. And yeah, so I, I think the best thing that you could do is maybe write it down. Like I write a lot of stuff down. I got a lot of pads over here. I got a lot of, you know, writing and drawings and like I got drawing behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but you know, this is just an idea, right? This is just something that sits there and you get it out. But where did it come from? And like, where do you want to go with this stuff? Like the prestigious job, does it take you where you're going? If it does, maybe it's a good idea. If it does not, where are you going now? <laughs> where are you going? Where do you want to go? Just remember the line of this, you know, you, you're on this planet, but you're not of it. But while you're here, why are you here? You did not just get put on this planet to eat donuts and Doritos, whatever, <laughs> whatever kind of, you know, confectionery it, it is or whatever you want or just to eat. No, just go over to that corner and eat some potatoes. Shut up. Potatoes and water. Don't say anything else. You know, something like that. I don't know. Where? Why are you here? What are you doing here? Think about it. Really think about it. Go for a walk. I know this just by yourself. Go talk to yourself by yourself. But why are you here? Is it for a prestigious job? Probably not. Most of the people I know that have prestigious jobs are, are miserable. They've got all this stuff in the world, but the more you have, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes, you know, people really want to just live out in the middle of nowhere. You know, like when I lived out uh, in uh, uh, Philly and I, I worked at some of the post offices way to the north, those people, they had oodles and oodles of acres and huge houses and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe that's for you. Maybe it's for me. Probably is. But wh why? Why? though you know like what why do you want to do it why why are you why are you going to that job or why are you doing this over here or that over here you know jesus did say not to worry about what you're eating or clothes or what, whatever that kind of stuff and i think there's a lot a, a lot of that that is very true because at the end of the day you're on this planet but you're not of it but why you're here what are you doing what are you doing with it? What are you doing with that time? Are you going to just float on? Because I can I can give you a guide to that, just floating on. Now, I've done that for four decades now, just not even paying attention, just, oh, I'll just go do this mindlessly stuff, the mindless, crazy. And it's the, the craziest part is, is most people watch me while I'm doing things because they're like, what's going to happen next with this guy? And I'm the one over here doing this stuff to, you know, for whatever reason, None of it makes any sense. I don't even think this video makes any sense, but hopefully you liked it. If you did, give me a, a, a like. Comment down below. Have you been floating through your life? Do you want to stop doing that? I saw a video the other day of a guy. He said to write 10 things down that you want to accomplish in the next 12 months. And he said, you know, if, if the person that you're talking to won't do that, then just move on to the next because they're not gonna, never going to do anything with themselves. So you write down 10 things. I think it's 10 things. I don't know whatever, 10 things that you want to do in the next year. It might be how much money or you want to have a car, or you got a head's house, the relationship, whatever it is, write, write all 10 things down and write them or circle the most important one down, down that you wrote down, circle the most important one and do a little bit towards that goal every single day. And within 12 months, you will likely be where you're going. So I think that's a good place to start. So is that prestigious job of yours on this list? If it's not, don't go for it. If it is, do a little bit towards that prestigious job every single day. Just know that you're on this planet, not of it. <laughs> so don't be too attached, I guess. But I don't know. I think of all things, my my answer to this question is relationships are definitely the most important, especially the one that you plan on spending the rest of your life with or pretty much the rest of your life with. I think that's the most important and build from there and build something with that person. Now, everybody's got their roles. Everybody's good at certain things. Everybody has what they want to do in the, in the certain situations that you happen to be in. And let everybody do that role. It's just like uh, 
when you go into, I don't know, I, I'm not really a huge sports freak, but if you look at, at football, for example, and, and the running back, you're not going to try to make the running back like a, a left tackle. So if the running back is good at being a running back, let the running back be good at being a running back and let them just grow in that role. So if you are, have a relationship with somebody and each person has their different roles that they're good at, don't try to make the other person good at a role that you're good at or, with, or vice versa. It doesn't make any sense. So get better at it, it, whatever the role is that you want to play in this thing that we call the planet. And then eventually you will get where it is that you're going. Because otherwise, you're just going to be floating on the rest of your life. Like one thing I'm usually pretty good at is getting in front of a camera and blabbering on about stuff. I don't even do it enough. One thing I'm not good at is being type A. I can't, type A and I, we do not get along. I don't even want to get along. I can't, I can't even think about it. I get disgusted even thinking about being type A. Now, there are certain circumstances that I do it out of necessity. But think about what it is that you could do just every day and it wouldn't bother you. And I think you go march towards that goal because <clears throat> whether you do it or whether you don't do it, there's going to be some kind of pain or hesitancy or fear involved either way. Cause if, if you're, if you're doing it, there's that fear that it won't work out. But if you're not doing it, then there's that fear that you're wasting your life or that you're not doing it. So either way, you're going to have some uncomfortable situations. Now, comfort is not the greatest thing either. I think uh, comfort keeps people stagnant. I've been mentioning the stagnant life uh, quite a bit lately. But yeah, I think... Finding something every day that makes you uncomfortable might be a, a good place to start. But really, write it write it down. Write it down. Can you even... Do you even have 10 things? You might not. And that actually might be better. That might be better. Because the less that you have pulling you in different directions, the better it is that you're going to make it to where you want to go. Like I've said in other videos, the people that I know are the most successful are the ones who just had a thing or two that they really like doing and the rest of it is just like whatever. Like I talked to somebody the other day and they're like, I only like doing this sport and I don't want to do any anything but this sport. It, it just takes my energy away from me. And that makes a lot of sense. And that's the way you should approach, I think, everything. You know, I may be uh, scatterbrained and just all over the place but when I get pointed on something, I, that's all I can think about. That's all I can do. That's all I can focus on until the task is, is done. And, you know, so I do have that. And I think everybody needs to have some form of that. Otherwise, it's going to be floating. <laughs> you know? like, oh, man. I mean, <laughs> if you do your life in review and you ask yourself, like, would I do this over again? If the answer is no, then chances are you probably should do something different. Anyway, hopefully this video, I mean, I can ramble on about this for a long time, <laughs> but <laughs> I think there's other, uh, uh, there's another point of like just asking God, or if you can't, if that word hurts your feelings or whatever, you see, you know, universe is, you know, whatever. Ask what it is you should be doing or just ask yourself. You may hate the answer. You may not like it at all. Because it might seem so hard to do. Take it for somebody who's, you know, I mean, I've had, I've, I've definitely had my successes. I really have. And it's only come after I was really pointed as just in one direction. And everything, it's, it's insane how everything falls into place when you do that. It's insane to watch. It really is. It's insane. And it happens quick.
but then when it when it's not like that, everything falls apart just as quick. So, would you rather having a falling apart just as quick or moving together? Anyway, comments, questions down below. Like, subscribe. Um, yes. Pointed direction. I think just one significant person in your life. You know, you can't have friends and all that, but I think just that one direction is the way to go. Anyway, talk to you in the next one.